ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance we have is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharru al-umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fil nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we will continue to discuss the heart and its position in the Quran and the Sunnah, its a position, the position that it has in our lives to direct our focus, to make it a heart that is rectified, that fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hopes for Allah's mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَأَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah says what means verily those who disbelieve, it's the same to you. Whether you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, warn them or you do not warn them, they will not believe. خَتَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ سَمْعِهِمْ وَعَلَىٰ بَصَارِهِمْ غِشَاوَةٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Allah says what means Allah has set a seal upon their hearts, proving that this heart is so vital that when Allah seals it, there's none that can guide it. That when Allah seals a heart, it is a heart that is truly in ruin. He has set a seal on their hearts and on their hearings. They're closed from Allah's guidance. And on their eyes there is a covering and they will have a great torment. This describes the disbelievers. Then Allah goes into ayat about the munafiqeen. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَقُولُ آمَنَّا بِاللَّهِ وَبِالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَمَا هُمْ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says about the munafiqeen, the hypocrites. He says, what means that of, of mankind there are some who are hypocrites, who say we believe in Allah on the last day, but they believe not. They don't really believe. يُخَادِعُونَ اللَّهَ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَمَا يَخْدَعُونَ إِلَّا أَنفُسَهُمْ وَمَا يَشْعَرُونَ They think to deceive Allah. They think to deceive, to deceive those who truly believe, while they only deceive themselves and perceive it not. فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ فَزَادَهُمُ اللَّهُ مَرَضًا وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْرِبُونَ In their hearts, in the hearts of the, of the munafiqeen, of the hypocrites, is a disease. The disease of doubt, the disease of nifaq, of hypocrisy. And Allah has increased their disease. A painful torment is theirs because they used to tell lies. So we see of those who are hypocritical, that Allah has chosen to make for their hearts to be described as ones that are diseased. They are diseased and in trouble. Allah says, أَلَمْ يَأْلِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَن تَخْشَعْ قُلُوبَهُمْ لِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَا نَزَلَ مِنَ الْحَقِّ وَلَا يَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِ فَطَالَ عَلَيْهُمُ الْأَمَدُ فَقَسَتْ قُلُوبَهُمْ وَكَثِيرٌ مِّنْهُمْ فَاسِقُونَ Allah says what means, has not the time come for the hearts of those who believe in Tawheed, 
in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with respect to His Lordship and His, His worship and His names and His attributes? Has not the time come for those who believe that their hearts should be affected by Allah's reminder that this Qur'an, when it's recited, it should affect the heart of the one who hears it and, that has, and what has been revealed of the truth, lest they become like those before of the previous scriptures who were given the Torah and the Injil, the Jews and the Christians, and the term was prolonged for them, so their hearts became hardened. The hardened heart which doesn't want to listen to the truth no more and finds every excuse to stay on the path that they are upon. And many of them were fasiqoon. They were rebellious and disobedient to Allah. So maqal Allah, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِنْدِ إِنَّ السَّمْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادَ كُلُّ أُولَاكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا And Allah says what means, and follow not that of which you have no knowledge. Like when some says, I have seen, when they haven't seen. They say, I've heard, even though they haven't heard. Verily, the hearing, the sight, and the heart, each of those will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that what our eyes see, what our ears listen to, what our hands do, we're constantly thinking that these will be a witness against you. But your heart will be questioned as to its sincerity, as to its true belief, and the likes of these matters. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَتَطْمَئِنَّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنَّ الْقُلُوبُ and Allah says what means those who believe in Allah's oneness and whose hearts find rest in the remembrance of Allah, verily in the remembrance of Allah through the hearts find rest. So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, more ayat to top the ones we heard last week about the heart, that we see it in these ayat and we see it in the hadith we mentioned and that we will mention, that it is one of the most important parts of our body that must be focused on, it must be worked on, it must be corrected, it must be warned and it must warn you. That piece of flesh that houses our hope, it houses our fear, it houses our love, it houses our hate, it houses our sincerity, it houses our truthfulness, it houses our emotions, it houses our belief and our faith. So we must remind one another like we do about the tongue and warn one another like we do about the tongue. We must remind one another about the rectification of the heart and setting it aright. The heart can be one that is happy, one that's at peace, one that is content, one that is at rest. Or it can be a heart that is in turmoil, that is diseased, that is troubled. And when ayah billah, may Allah forbid it, one that is sealed off from Allah and His guidance and His mercy. We remind ourselves with the hadith that is famous, that we will build upon today, on al numan ibn Bashir radiallahu anhu, قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ألا وإن في الجسد مضغة إذا صلحت صلح الجسد كله وإذا فسدت فسد الجسد كله ألا وهي القلب. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, indeed there is a piece of flesh in your body. If it's sound, the rest of you is going to be sound. But if it is corrupt, the rest of you is going to be corrupt. Like the foundation of a building, you can build the most beautiful building and it can have the best of structure. But if it's built on something not stable, not steady, then it will fall apart the minute some wind or, or earthquake comes. The heart, if it is sound, the rest of the body will be sound. And if it is corrupt, the rest of the body will be corrupt. He said, indeed, this piece of flesh is your heart. And Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, لا يدخل الجنة إنسان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبر من كبر. This hadith which is collected in the Muslim of Imam Ahmad in the Sahih, the Prophet said, no human being will enter paradise if there, as, if there is as much as a mustard seed or an atom's weight or the weight of a seed of arrogance or pride in their heart. Imagine that. Yet how many people puff themselves up with pride? How many of the Muslims have arrogance in their heart looking down on those who have quote-unquote less than them? How many Muslims think higher of themselves than other people and judge and put themselves on a pedestal and puff themselves up with pride? This arrogance, this pride, this looking down on the people, it all emanates from your heart. So if you have that in your heart, get rid of it. Because Jannah cannot be a place for the person who has even a speck 
an Adam's way, a mustard seed of pride or arrogance in their heart. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he mentions that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, تُفْتَحُ أَبْوَابَ الْجَنَّةِ يَوْمَ الْإِثْنَيْنِ وَيَوْمَ الْخَمِيسِ فَيُغْفَرُ لِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ لَا يُشْرِفُ بِاللَّهِ شَيْئًا إِلَّا رَجُلًا كَانَتْ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَخِيهِ شَحْنَاءُ فَيُقَالْ أَنْظِرُ هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَصْطَلِحُ أَنْظِرُ هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَصْطَلِحُ أَنْظِرُ هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَصْطَلِحُ رواه مسلم This hadith in Sahih Muslim the Prophet said the gates of paradise of Jannah are opened on Monday and Thursday of every week. Allah forgives every servant who did not commit shirk. This is the stable, this is the foundation of our deen before the actions is that our tawheed and our aqidah is correct. In order to earn this mercy from, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go into Jannah. So Allah, He admits, He forgives upon every servant who does not associate partners with Him. Except for a man who has enmity between himself and his brother, it will be said to the two of them, delay them from entering Jannah until they reconcile. Delay them from entering Jannah until they reconcile. Delay them from entering Jannah until they reconcile. Abad Allah, O servants of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us, those who give in, in times of prosperity and in times of hardship, and those who repress their anger, and those who pardon mankind, they forgive, they let go, they don't hold the grudges, they don't hold things over a person's head. Allah loves these people, they're the muhsineen. Allah gave us the quality that we should forgive and let go and not hold grudges and reconcile with our brothers so much so we can't go more than three days without speaking to them. And yet, here we are, Brothers of blood relation, even. Children with their parents, parents with their children, not talking for long periods of time. Brothers and sisters in faith, this shahada, this tawheed, it bonds you greater than any other bond that exists. Yet, if you earn Jannah, you will be prohibited from entering it until you reconcile. Why delay going to Jannah? Because of your arrogance or your pride or your hostility or your enmity or the hardness of your heart that you don't want to forgive your brother. And look past what they may have done to you. This grudge, that enmity, that hatred, that resistance to forgive the problems in your heart, you've got to rectify your heart. Amr ibn Shurayh bin Shurab, he reported that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Allah ukhabirkum. بِمَا يُذْهِبُ وَهَرَ الصَّبْرِ صَوْمُ ثَلَاثَةِ أَيَّامِ مِنْ كُلِّ شَهَرِ In Sunan al-Nasa'i, you have an authentic hadith where the Prophet وسلم, he said, shall I not tell you what will rid your heart of impurities to help purify your heart? He said, fasting three days out of every month. In this hadith, it's left open that you fast three days out of any, any month. But we have some other hadith that give us some guidance. In order to preserve the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we should remind ourselves of them. Because we've made fasting, and I advise myself first, we've made fasting a thing for Ramadan only. And we are losing out because fasting helps purify the heart of its impurities. عن قطادة بن منحان القيسي قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يأمرنا أن نصوم البيض ثلاثة ثلاثة عشر وأربع عشر وخمسة عشر قال وقال وقال هن تهيئة الدهر. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said or it was said of him that he used to command us to fast the three white days. أيام الديب. These are the thirteenth, the fourteenth, and the fifteenth of the Islamic month of Muharram, Safar, Rajab, and the likes of those. He said, this is like keeping a perpetual fast. If you did these three days of the 13th, 14th, 15th, it's as if you fasted the whole year without breaking it. And Ummi Salma radiallahu anha qalat kana rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya'muru musiyam thalafati ayyam awwal khamis wal ithnayni wal ithnayni. Rawahum nasa'i wa hadha hadithun sahih. We find in Sunnah nasa'i a sahih hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Umm Salma Afwan, she said that the Prophet Sallallahu used to enjoin fasting three days. The first Thursday of the month, and then the Monday after, and the Monday after. 
This is from the sunnah that we find. So we find many days to fast in the month that could total three. Ayam al the 13th, 14th, 15th of each month. Mondays and Thursdays. The first Thursday, then the Mondays that follow them. Any three days that you may like. And these, insha'Allah, will help purify the heart. An Amr ibn Absah, he reported that a man said to the Prophet ﷺ, What is Islam? And the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, أَنْ يُسْلِمَ قَلْبُكَ بِاللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَأَنْ يَسْلَمَ الْمُسْلِمُونَ مِنْ لِسَانِكَ وَيَدِكَ رَوَهُمْ أَحْمَدْ وَهَذَا حَدِيثٌ صَحِيحٌ The Prophet ﷺ, he told the man when he was asked, What is Islam? He said, That you surrender what? Not just your body, not just your mind, not just your, not just your action. You surrender your heart to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glorified and exalted is He. That you surrender everything to His will. What He commanded you do great, you do your best to follow. What He forbade you do your best to stay away from. You rush to tawbah. Everything is surrendering to what Allah wants. You don't have a care in your mind of what your desires want or what your body is tempting you to do. You want to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Islam. That you surrender your heart to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that the Muslims, that they're safe from your tongue and your hand. That the Muslims are safe from your tongue and your hand. So this, just saying the shahada makes me a Muslim. This, just praying without it really being in my heart or stating it with my tongue. You're being a Muslim. All of this is, is baloney. Iman, tasdiq al-qalb, iman, belief, faith, is the belief in the heart. Wal qalb, ala al-lisan, and the actions, uh, the statement of the tongue, afwan. Wal amal bil jawarih, and the actions of the limbs. These three compromise the components of iman and belief. And Abdullah ibn Amr, radiallahu anhu, qal, he said that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, inna al-iman liyakhlaqu fi jawfi ahadikum kama yakhlaqu thawb, الخلق فاسأل الله أن يجدد الإيمان في قلوبكم. He mentioned that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, verily the faith, the the faith of one of you, the iman of one of you, it will wear out with him with him just as a shirt becomes worn out with time. And we know this is from the principles of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. الإيمان يزيد وينقص. That iman, it goes up and it goes down, it goes up and it goes down. What is upon you when it's up is to praise Allah and continue to look for good. What is upon you when your iman is down is to come to Allah with repentance, seeking His forgiveness, remembering Him in the morning and the evening, seeking His pleasure, doing good deeds, coming back to obedience, establishing your prayers and the likes of these matters. So the faith of one of you will become worn out, just like the shirt become worn, wears out, wear, worn out. So ask Allah to renew the faith in your heart. Always ask Allah to renew the faith in your heart, to keep it high, to keep you on a high level, so that you go out worshiping Him in the best of ways. <laughs> إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam No one can deny that although that part is a piece of flesh that is equated to the size of your fist and this may make up what? 2-3% of your body there's no doubt that as it's necessary for your, it to be, for your body to function, it must be rectified and corrected in order for you to please your Lord and to make it to Jannah. We have to work on our heart. We have to purify it of its diseases before Allah seals it and won't guide it back to His deen. Take advantage of the fact that Allah made us Muslim and guided us to this deen and praise Him for it. But to do so, you have to work on your heart and ask Allah to strengthen it. Ya muqallab al-qulub, thabit qalbi ala deenik. O changer or turner of the hearts, make my heart firm upon your deen. Ask Allah, and you jadid al-iman fi qalbik. Ask Allah to make the iman, always to renew it, to renew it, to pick it up, to make the iman of your heart higher and higher. And Abu Ishaq, 
Rahimahullah, he reported, or radiallahu anhu, he reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said, خَيْرُ مَا أُعْتِيَ الرَّجُلُ الْمُؤْمِنْ خُلُقٌ حَسَنٌ وَشَرُ مَا أُعْتِيَ الرَّجُلُ قَلْبُ صُوءٌ فِي صُورَةٍ حَسَنًا The Prophet sallallahu he said in this hadith, it's in the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, and it is sahih, it is an authentic hadith. He said sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the best of what a believing man can be given is good character. And we mention this because good character, yes, it may come off your tongue. Yes, you may do something with your hands. It is your heart that guides you to that good character. The heart. We were, we were commanded to have the best of character. That good character, good behavior, good manners, this is the heaviest thing on your scale on the Day of Judgment. It comes from the heart. The heart is the source of what will guide you to have that good character, if it is correct. So the best of what a believing man can be given is good character. But the worst, the worst of what a man can be given is an evil heart with a beautiful appearance. They may have the best looks physically. They may show that they have a good heart, but really inside it is evil. There's no pure intention to please Allah. There's no pure intention to really earn Allah's forgiveness and mercy and hasanat to earn Jannah. This is the worst of men. They're given an evil, they've been given an evil heart, or they have an evil heart, it's just dressed to be something beautiful in appearance. Along these lines of Hurairah, he narrates in the hadith that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, إن الله لا ينظر إلى أجسادكم وإلى سوركم ولكن ينظر إلى قلوبكم. This hadith which is in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Verily Allah does not look at your bodies or your faces. You can be the, uh, what are you, not the role model, the, the beauty model or whatever it could be. You could be the supermodel of looks. You could be the handsomest of guys, the prettiest of women, whatever it may be. Allah does not care. Another hadith mentions, Amwalikum. Allah does not care how much money you come with. It's His in the first place. It may be your name on the account or your name on the deed with the county, but it belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you don't think that, you're fooling yourself. Allah's not going to look at those things. But what's He going to look at? He's going to look at your heart. And another hadith mentions, A'malikum, and your deeds. Allah's going to look at your heart and your deeds when you come to meet Him on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. He can either come over you and shield you from all the people to exchange your sins and discuss what you did. Or He can expose you to all people. It's on you. It's on you. Allah will look at your heart and your deeds, not how you look, not how much money you have, not what success you had in this life, not how many people liked you. He's going to look at your heart and your deeds. قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لَا يَجْتَمْعُ فِي جَوْفِ عَبْدٍ مُؤْمِنٍ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْحَسَدِ The Prophet ﷺ, he said in this authentic hadith in Sunan al-Nisa'i, Faith and envy, they're not combined in the believing servant. A believer cannot say they're a believer, cannot say they're a mu'min, cannot say they have full faith and complete faith and belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and at the same time have envy. That hasad, when you are angry that someone has been given something you don't have, when you want it stripped of them because you don't have it, when you eye it so much because you think you deserve it rather than them, not realizing all of that is your heart being so corrupt that you're trying to give yourself a level other than what Allah chose for you. When He is the best of planners, He is the best of choosers, He is the best of granters, He knows we don't know. These two can't be in the believing heart. ثُمَّ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ لَا يَشْتَمْعُ الشُّحْحُ وَالْإِيمَانُ فِي قَلْبِ عَبْدٍ أَبَدًا and the Prophet Sallallahu along the same lines, he said, also in Sunan Nisa'i and Sahih, that greed and faith can never be combined in the heart. The heart of a believer cannot have any greed, any source of materialism. This does not mean he doesn't want to look good. He doesn't want to dress well. He doesn't want to be presentable. He doesn't want to have something nice. This is not what's meant, and we've reviewed this many a times. But greed, wanting for yourself, thriving, Always just seeking and seeking and seeking, never satisfied. This is greed. 
You're either a greedy heart or you're a mu'min, or you're a believer. Get rid of the greed. Know what Allah destined for you, chose for you, gave to you, is better than having what you might think is better. It's better than having more, that, that the more that you're seeking. Maybe you having less is going to give you more in Jannah. Maybe you having less is going to keep you a believer. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, along the lines of the heart, and something I wanted to bring up as a nasiha to all of us, عن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من ترك الجمعة ثلاثة من غير ضرورة طبع الله على قلبه This hadith which is Hassan in the Sunan of Ibn Majah the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said whoever leaves off three Jum'ah three Friday prayers for no necessary reason the reason ain't I gotta have a haircut the reason ain't I had to go to the store Revolve your life around the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're at a job place, we can write a letter. We can talk with them. You do not want to miss Jum'ah for no valid, valid, valid excuse. And we've gotten so lackadaisical that we've made everything a valid excuse, even a sniffle in the nose. And this is playing with the deen of Allah. You miss three Jum'ahs, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, He will place, uh, it will be said, He will place a seal over your heart. We just talked about the heart being sealed. This is like the one who's in disbelief. The disbelievers are the hearts that are sealed. Look at the equation. This Jum'ah, this time of congregation, it is a vital aspect of your week. This is the best day of the week. You have to make it a priority. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمَ الْجُمْعَةِ كَانَ عَلَى كُلِّ بَابٍ من أبواب المسجد الملائكة يكتبون الأول فالأول فإذا جلس الإمام طوه الصحف, الصحف وجاءوا يستمعون الذكر رواه البخاري And this is the one time that Jum'ah we want to bring up and mention because again we become lackadaisical yes we're in America lunch time is 12 to 1 we have work we have this other Talk to your, 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 your employers. If you have the businesses, close them down, you will see Allah give you the risk. It is not worth it. What we're doing, neglecting this Jum'ah, the Prophet ﷺ said, the Prophet ﷺ, he said in the authentic hadith in Sayyid al-Bukhari, on every Friday at the doors of the masjid, there are angels standing. These ain't the angels on your shoulders. These are the angels specifically to write down who's coming to Jum'ah. They're standing at the sister's door, they're standing at the brother's door, they're standing at the social hall door. If you come in from the office door, they're standing there. If you came in from the back, there's angels there. Every door of the masjid, there's angels writing down who's coming. Whoever came first, he's writing them down. And that person has the best reward. And we'll, we've discussed that before and we'll discuss it again as a reminder in future weeks, inshallah. The one who comes first, he gets written down first. This is going to be presented to Allah. This person came early on Jum'ah just to make sure they got the front row. Just to make sure that we could write them at the top of the list. Just to make sure they could come and worship you. And remember you. And read your book and the likes of these matters. Then they write them in chronological order. Until the imam, whoever he may be, comes and sits on the minbar. In whatever masjid you may be in. When the imam sits on the minbar, they close their books, their scrolls. And then they come and sit. Yes, there are angels. This is from Iman. Al-Iman bin Malaika. That you believe in the angels, that they exist even though you don't see them. They're sitting. Yastama'una dhikr. They're listening to the khutbah along with you. Make Jum'ah a priority. Sometimes we start, there's one row, two rows, maybe two rows and some scattered. The front row is the best row, the more reward, then the second and the likes that come early or get your name written on that list. So it says your name. Yeah, I came to Jum'ah, I was the first one in the building. If you can't come that early, whatever you do, come before the angels close their suhuf, before they close their books and their pages, so that your witness has been here before the imam sat down on the minbar. And while I have your attention on that, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من نسى الحسى فقد لغى 
Whoever plays with the rocks, that back then didn't have this nice comfortable carpet, they were sitting on the ground on gravel. Whoever played with the gravel, قَدْ لَغَى They've committed idle talk. وَمَنْ لَغَى فَلَا جُمْعَةَ لَهُ And whoever committed لَهُ Whoever committed idle talk, there's no Jum'a for him. Other hadith mentioned even to say, مَنْ قَالَ لِأَخُوْ أَنْصُطْ Whoever says to his brother, be quiet, has committed لَهُ Whoever responds to a salam, shakes a hand, has committed لَهُ What about you brothers that I see? Look at the phone. You ain't disrespecting me. I'm a nobody. I ain't caring about myself. You just blew your jum'ah. Or decreased its reward. You put Allah on hold for everyone and everything. Allah gets put on the back burner for everyone and everything. But you can't let one phone call be missed. You can't let one text not be looked at later. You can't give salam to your brother after so you can come in, pray your two as quickly and listen to the khutbah. You can't shop it up with them later, you can't give them salams later, give them a hug later, whatever you're gonna do. This is serious business. You want your Jum'ah accepted, you came here. You want it accepted, you come in, you pray two rak'ahs because the Prophet commanded you to, even if the Imam is giving the khutbah. مَنْ جَاءَ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدُ الْإِمَامِ يَحْطُبْ فَلْيَرْكَعْ رَتْعَتَيْنِ وَلْيَتَجَوَّسْ فِيهِمَا He commanded Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you come to the masjid and the imam is giving the khutbah, pray to rak'ahs, make them light. This is for your benefit. This info is knowledge for your benefit, for your jum'ah to be accepted. No more looking at the phone. Don't even bring it in if you're that tempted. No more looking at it. No more giving salams here, but that's for after. The priority is you and listening to the khutbah of whoever is giving the imam, whatever masjid you're in. Allah makhfil al-muslimin wa al-muslimat, wa al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat, Allah ahiyai min humma al-amwat, inna ka anta samiyan qariban mujib al-ta'wat, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubin ala deenik, ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب سبحان ربك رب العزة يوم يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين